So I made a cool grunge poster the other day and I'm gonna walk you through each step I've taken in Photoshop to create it from start to finish. So let's jump straight in. So here we've got the final poster design. Now I have a few color options with this using a gradient map. So if I was to hide this here, you can see I've got this black and white option as well as if I was to go into it and reverse it. If you're working with duotones, it's very easy. You've got so many options with colors and what you're gonna work with. But the main thing that ties this all together is definitely the texture. So as I zoom in, you can see I've got this nice distress text effect and kind of like paint splat film dust textures going over everything. And even this kind of diagonal fabric texture that's tying everything in. So let me jump straight into a new canvas here with File and New. Now I'm gonna be using 3840 by 4800 pixels, standard for all my poster work by now. So I'm just gonna paste this image in here. Now, because it's already in black and white, it's very easy to format. But all I need to do is remove these corner edges. So to do that, I'm gonna come into effects and blending options. You can see I'm just gonna slide in the white slider to remove the white value from the image. I'm gonna bring that down enough till I feel like a lot of the area is out and then hit okay here. Now that I've done this, I can convert this to a smart object and then come on to effects and color overlay. So now as I set this to white, as you can see, I mean, you, this is when you can change to any color, but I'm gonna use white because I'm gonna be using a gradient map. Now, all we have is the white color isolated. So there's now no background. So all I need to do is remove these kind of white bars around the edges. So I'm just gonna add a mask onto this layer, use the magic wand tool here, command backspace. Now you can see this is kind of chunking out the outline. So I can just use a brush with a white foreground color to paint back in these kind of lost edges. Now I'm not gonna spend loads of time making this perfect, but obviously in your own work, you wanna make sure that it's all to a good standard. Now this image is a little bit of a pain as you can see because the kind of like corner frame is a little bit jolted and mixed in with the rest of the white color. So it's hard to separate. So now with this kind of boxed outline, just use the black brush, cover over this. And now if it's an area that you can see is like quite clearly split from the rest of the image, I can just use one of the lasso tools here and just paint in some lines here. And then command backspace with black as my background. Now to swap between your foreground and background colors, if you press X, it's the quickest way. There we go, now that we've got this image solely outlined, so this is just a white value now, which is great. I'm just gonna place this in the middle here, kind of off to the side. Now, because this is a type heavy layout, I'm gonna be adding some grid lines in. So if you come up to view, guides, new guide layout, I'm gonna use 100 pixel margins across the outside, and I'm not gonna include any columns and rows at the moment, just because I'm using the kind of outer bounds here, and that's it. Okay, so the typeface I'm gonna be using for this is owner's extra narrow. Now I'm gonna be using the extra black variant because it's amazing for headlines. You can see that once I once I change the color of this to white, I'm just gonna type in big beats, which is gonna be our top large scale headline. So I'm just gonna extend that in scale, like in proportion to the width of the margins. And now I'm simply gonna duplicate this down, type in the next line, which is R the best. Now this does not need to be complicated. I can simply just scale it to the right size that it fits in. So I'm just gonna bring them closer together. Just use my arrow keys to adjust it even finer. And once I've done this, I can just duplicate both of these down, type in our next bit of text. You can see that as I drag this down, I have a little indicator coming up saying that there's the same gap, it's an eight pixel margin, but to me, optically, it doesn't look the same. So I'm just gonna use the arrow keys to kind of bring that up a little bit more. Okay, nice, so this is looking good already. So this image slightly overlays the text, so I'm gonna bring that up using Command Shift and Square Brackets to bring that to the top of my layers. I'm just gonna leave that there for the moment. So now I'm just gonna copy one of these typefaces again. I'm gonna type in the Big Beat Manifesto and then use Center Justification for it. And now from this point, I'm gonna use a golden ratio to scale down my type. So divide it by 1.618. If you just type in backslash, I'm gonna do that a few times until I feel like it's the right scale for the slot. Now in my type properties panel, I'm gonna adjust the leading here, which is the spacing between lines. So I'm gonna highlight all of this, make sure that command D to deselect that. And I'm gonna type in 40 here. I say that's well spaced here, so this is good. Now I can just use my justification here. I can use my align tools. So I'm gonna to align that on the horizontal center. And now we've got the type layout done, we can move into color and working in the texture. So the main texturized element here is gonna be a displacement map. So to do this, I'm going to collect all of the type layers and I'm gonna use Command G to group them. Then Command J to duplicate and I'm gonna hide the initial file. Now, if I use my convert to smart object hotkey, so I have set that for myself in preferences, which you can do. If not, just right click, convert to smart object here. I'm gonna name this displace in the correct spelling. And then I'm gonna come up to filter, distort, and displace. I'm gonna set the scale of each to, I'm gonna say 30 to start with, and this is obviously interchangeable, so we can come back and change it if it's too strong or too weak in terms of displacement. So I'm just gonna look through my displacement folder and I have a file here called Film Dust. Now, this is gonna be one of the textures we're going to add on top, so it's gonna tie in really well. So I'm gonna select this. Now, this works amazing as a displacement texture because it adds in all of these kind of really subtle distressed edges. So straight away, it's almost like a paint splat distress effect in the top left corner. And we've even got these fine lines that are mimicked by the film dust. So it looks very inconsistent, high in detail. 
This bit specifically is my favorite for sure. It's kind of like chopped up the letters there as well. It just works amazing for typography. So then once I've done this with a displacement map, typically it's gonna move it slightly. So I'm gonna use the arrow keys just to adjust this back within the grid lines. So now I'm gonna repeat the same thing on the image. Now, because we have a mask active here, I'm going to duplicate this and convert to a smart object to remove the mask. So now I'm gonna apply it to this layer. And I'm only gonna use 10 for this scale just because I don't want as strong of an effect on it. And I'm gonna use the same texture layer here. Great, so we've got a very subtle, similar effect kind of applying around the edges here as well as throughout the image. You can see these kind of inconsistent splats and dots. Now that is gonna work for me. I didn't want it to be too strong on it anyway. So with this layout fulfilled, could just move on to color now. So I'm gonna rename this image just so we've got all of our layers intact. And then I'm gonna add in a gradient map. So I'm gonna come down to adjustments down here, select gradient map. Now before picking your colors, you need to make sure that this gradient icon is selected rather than the mask. The reason for this is because you, if you end up using the eyedropper tool, it's gonna to only select the color white because you're selected on the mask. So now from here, you have all the options in the world. So I've got a whole bunch of presets, so I can just scroll through them and see what I like. Now, even though I have multiple colors, it's not gonna reply simply because it's already in black and white. So I can see a kind of like black and red one here, which I'm gonna use. So I'm just gonna fire black the whole way to the left, move red the whole way to the right. Now it is as simple as that really in terms of just adding a gradient map. I'm gonna make this a bit more of a vibrant red just before we add in the kind of dulling textures. Now we can add in our texture files and start blending them into the image. So for this one I used, it's called Select Text 4. Now this is a pack I got from Deron. So for Deron Studio, I'll link that in the caption. So now as I set this layer mode to screen, you're gonna see how amazing they are for grunge work. It's got this really cool, intricate kind of diagonal lines that are really fine that run the whole way through the image. It's great. So Command Zero to bring that back to the center. And now what I'm gonna do is reduce this opacity a bit. So I'm gonna put this down to maybe about 70 so that we've got this, it looks gray, it doesn't look completely black, which is what I like, and it's got an overlay over the text as well. Now I'm gonna duplicate this, because even though it's overlaid over the text, it's harder to see because it's a lighter color. So I'm then gonna drag this layer mode down to exclusion, and I'm gonna set the opacity to about 10% here, maybe even slightly higher. So let me bring that down to 10, and then I'm gonna use the levels tab just to further adjust this. So if I use Command L, what I'm aiming for here is the texture to apply more over the type to kind of match the level of texture in the background. So use these sliders to increase and decrease contrast. So I'm gonna bring in the dark values and then bring in the midtones and the high values. And you're gonna see that this is gonna increase the level of texture on the text. Now it's quite subtle at the moment. So if I bring that over a bit more, that's bringing in some more texture there. Yeah, great. Now I'm gonna repeat the same step on this select text line and I'm gonna bring in the dark values just so we've got a bit more of a gray background. I mean, a bit more of a darker gray background. And there we go. So now I have one more texture, which is gonna be the film dust. So I'm gonna use this film dust texture. Now I will also link this in the description. This is a free pack, I believe. And now I'm gonna set the layer mode of this to lighter color. The reason I do this is because you can see the white areas are where the detail is. So using lighter color will isolate those and apply them over the top. So now the splats are coming around the edges, looks great. I'm also gonna duplicate this layer and set it to difference. Now using difference, it's gonna also bring through the dark values. So you can see now we've got these kind of splats in a darker color, which is great. But I'm gonna make sure the lighter color one is over the top so that we can see them both. Now with this layer selected, you can play around with opacity and just see what works for you. I'm gonna set it to around 80. May set the difference layer to around 80 as well, just so it's not too overpowering. Now this is effectively the design done. And you can see the distress is a little bit weaker. Now the distress in this one is a little bit weaker, but that's fine because we can go back in and change it. So I'm just gonna come back onto the displace layer. I'm gonna set the scales to 50 instead of 30. Then I'm gonna hit OK on the same texture layer. There we go, we've got a little bit more strength in this now. So once again, just use the arrow keys, open up your grid lines using command and colon. I'm gonna use my arrow keys to just shift it back into place. And there we go, we've got our final grunge design. It's did not take long to do, really like the aesthetic of it. Really nice just using simple duotone colors. Just makes everything very easy and you've got loads of options. So if I was to cycle through these here, even just reversing it, that's a whole new colorway. You can set it back to black and white. But yeah, that's the final piece done. YouTube, as always, thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. I hope you could find it useful. And if you want more content like this, make sure to subscribe because I release twice a week. So I'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>